Hey guys, this is Mel and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be showing you how to make raspberry chocolate macaroons. This video has been highly requested and I'm finally making it now, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get straight to the ingredients. You'll need some raspberry, whipping cream and dark chocolate. To make the chocolate ganache, you want to pour some hot whipping cream over the finely chopped chocolate. Then you want to let it sit for a few minutes, mix and then cover and set it aside. For the macaroon shells, you need some egg white, white sugar, almond flour, icing sugar, and some food coloring. Before you start, you want to preheat your oven to 140 degrees Celsius, and you want to prepare a piping bag with a small round piping tip. For macarons, you want to make sure our dry ingredients are as smooth and fine as they can be. So you want to start off by sifting almond meal and icing sugar together. You want to do this at least once, but ideally twice. I like to sift it onto a parchment paper. You can do it into a bowl, it doesn't matter at all. Now in an other bowl that's clean and dry, you want to add in your egg whites and then start beating them on low. When you see little bubbles on the surface, you can add in about a quarter of your white sugar and then start beating again but this time use medium high speed. Gradually add in the remaining sugar and continue to beat on medium high speed for about 5 minutes. Your egg whites should firm up and form about soft to stiff peaks. Now we want to add some colour to our macaron shells. I chose pink because I wanted the colour to match the flavour. You can use any colour or skip the food colouring, it will be perfectly fine. A point to note is that you have to add about 2 drops of food colouring after you've reached your ideal colour because the oven tends to wash off the colours of the macaron shells. Now we'll be gradually adding in the dry ingredients to our meringue and this is the part where it could all go wrong. Trust me, I learned it the hard way. <laughs> Only add about a quarter or even less of the dry ingredients each time and you want to make sure everything is well mixed together before you add in more of the dry ingredients. You need to fold in the mirroring and dry ingredients, which means you cut down the middle of the mirroring, scrape down its bottom and then kind of push it over to the other side. Repeat till everything is incorporated. One thing to note that you have to be very very gentle as well and I highly recommend using a rubber or a silicone spatula because it's easier for you to control the amount of force you're using. Just imagine you're patting a little puppy or kitten and yeah, just be very, very gentle. This consistency will be too thick, so keep mixing for 30 seconds to about a minute. And when you reach this, it's kind of like molten lava, then stop right away. This is the perfect consistency and don't be tempted to go in and mix anymore. Transfer the mixture to the piping bag we've prepared immediately. Silicon mats or parchment paper are must for making macarons, so make sure you have those. And now we can pipe our mixture onto our lined baking tray. All you have to do is to hold your piping bag upright, gently squeeze so the mixture will come out in a perfect round shape. Now bound the tray on the counter a few times to remove the bigger air bubbles. Traditionally macarons are left at room temperature for about 2 hours, so they will develop little feet at the bottom. I don't have the patience for that, so what I do is I take a hairdryer and just blow dry them on low. It takes only 10 minutes, but you do have to make sure your hairdryer is clean. Your macaron shells should have a matte surface, and when you gently poke them, nothing should stick to your finger. That's when you can pop them into the oven for 13 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. 
If your macarons don't stick to the parchment paper or silicon mat, then they're ready. Now you can remove them from the oven and then place them on a cooling rack. Remove the macaron shells from the parchment paper and try to pair them up according to their sizes. Now pipe or spread the chocolate ganache we prepared earlier on the macaron shells. Place half of a raspberry in the center. Pipe or spread some more chocolate ganache, then top it with its other half, the other shell, so they form little sandwiches. Macarons taste best if they're left overnight, so the macaron shells have a chance to absorb the moisture and the flavour of the filling. And there you have your pink French macarons. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want more details and tips on how to make these, you can visit my blog. I'll put the link in the description box below. And I'll see you next time. Bye!